please remember, register to vote. Um, our next speaker is Reverend Georgia Du Bois, who is a former Reverend of the St. John Episcopal Church in Bolivar. She is a founding member of the Jefferson County Homeless Coalition. We welcome her back to our community. Introduce the song and present to others, Reverend Giorgio I never got over kindergarten. I brought show and tell. <laughs> thank the Jefferson County branch of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People for inviting me to speak today along with the other ministers whose presence I am honored to share. Thank you to all of you for turning out on a cold day, although not the coldest we've ever marched on, to remember Dr. King. And thanks to Mr. George Rutherford for suggesting that our topic should be peace and love. I dedicate this talk to the memory of Dr. King and to someone who followed his example faithfully and whom I was honored to call a friend, James Alvin Talbert, Sr. We live in an environment that we could have not have imagined we were marching for peace and equality in the 1960s. We have come a long way, say some. We have a long way to go. I remember that before Dr. King was assassinated, he became active in the peace movement. And people acted like he had some nerve to be talking about ending the war in Vietnam. Wasn't he the man who was fighting for racial justice? He should just keep in his own bailiwick, even though 7,260 African Americans died in that war. The last sermon he preached at National Cathedral was about learning to live in peace, and he said that it is time. Here are a few of the things that he said in that sermon. The hour has come for everybody, for all institutions of the public sector and the private sector to work to get rid of racism. And now, if we are to do it, we must honestly admit certain things and get rid of certain myths that have constantly been disseminated over our nation. One is the myth of time. It is the notion that only time can solve the problem of racial injustice. And there are those who often sincerely say to the Negro and his allies in the white community, why don't you slow up? Stop pushing things so fast. Only time will solve this problem. And if you will just be nice and patient and continue to pray, in a hundred or 200 years, the problem will be solved. There is an answer to that myth. It is that time is neutral. It can be used to wither constructively or destructively. And I am sorry to say this morning that I am absolutely convinced that the forces of will in our nation, the extreme right of our nation, the people of the wrong side, have used time much more effectively than the forces of goodwill. 
And it may well be that we will have to repent in this generation. Not merely for the vitriolic words and the violent actions of bad people, but for the appalling silence and indifference of the good people who sit around and say, wait on time. Somewhere, we must come to see that human progress never rolls in on the wheels of inevitability. It comes through the tireless efforts and the persistent work of dedicated individuals who are willing to be co-workers with God. And without this hard work, time itself becomes an ally of the primitive forces of social stagnation. So we must help time and realize that the time is always right to do right. And then, a month later, he was shot dead. He was assassinated. I remember how much despair we felt at times that there would be an end to progress toward racial equality. Yet the man in his talk about and actions for peace and love and freedom were not forgotten. People kept on marching and speaking out and things continued to change, sometimes at a glacial pace. Very slowly. Ironically, a war was part of the growing peace between black and white in the United States. When it is a black medic holding the drip bottle that is keeping your wounded white self alive in a Huey helicopter above a battlefield, far away from all the good things and the bad things that you know in your native country, that black medic suddenly becomes not a black man, a feared stranger. He is literally your lifeline. When the person sleeping next to you in your tent is a black man you have seen, pick up a live grenade and toss it out of the hole you were both sitting in. You realize that he is a lot like you. He wants to stay alive and he wants you to stay alive too. Because at some point, you might do the same thing for him. There are more things that unite you than divide you. A lot of white people came back from Viet Vietnam, a little less racist than when they went over there. There are many firsts as the barriers fall. Surely the most amazing is the election of a black man, Barack Obama, as the President of the United States, as Madiba, the great Nelson Mandela of South Africa said, it seems impossible until it happens. Some people started talking about a post-racial society. That was in 2008, and it was a giddy, joyous feeling to think that eventually such a society might be possible. President Obama was a good president, respected over all the world. And some white people found that frightening. I don't think there are very many people talking about a post-racial society right now. I believe that it is fear that is the opposite of love. Perfect love casts out fear, says Paul the Apostle, and some people don't like to let go of fear, in part because it is a familiar companion. Fear, ironically, is how they find the face that will face, the strength that will face the world. The fear that Barack Obama's presidency aroused in some people is, in part, what brought us to the point we find ourselves at now. With a racist as president, unarmed black men, and some women dying at the hands of police, and a big buzz about one of the most famous people in the world, a very talented and rich American black woman, as the next president of the United States. Does that seem strange? Does it seem like the country is ricocheting from one wall, you should excuse the expression, to another? What will it take for us to live together in love, peace, and freedom? When is the time? The first thing is that we must not let despair defeat us. 
It is easier to work for peace and love and freedom with a full belly, a roof over your head, and work that will keep you fed and sheltered and warm and employed. What will you do to make sure your own neighbors are fed, clothed, sheltered, warm, and employed? That's a big part of peace. That commandment to love our neighbors as ourselves is why we must work to make sure that no more unarmed young black men die at the hands of police. I believe, this in, I believe this in theory ever since I first saw the photo of 14-year-old Emmett Till in his coffin in Life magazine. Now I believe it in my own blood. And here's part of the show and tell. This is my grandson, Maxwell Orion Carmichael. My six-year-old grandson loves and trusts everyone he meets. He has brown skin and curly black hair. I don't think he's ever heard the N-word. Not yet. Although his loving father has heard it, has had scary stops by the police for a malfunctioning turn signal. And God bless him. Loves his white family, anyway. Thank you, Miles Carmichael. So what I am saying, I guess, is now I not only have an intellectual and moral commitment to freedom and justice and love and peace. I have skin in the game. Maybe the way for all of us to learn to take care of each other like family is to be truly family, with children that result from loving choice, not from violence or an oppressive relationship, the way children of blacks and whites were born in the past. <coughs> we must continue to show up to ask for justice again and again and again. As justice grows, violence and anger diminish. We must speak out with words that are firm in asking what we need and want, but which are not profane, or abusive, or dishonest, or insincere. We have enough of that sort of behavior on view now. You know where. We don't need any more. It is time. We have had enough. And I would like to thank Oprah Winfrey for saying those words in relation to another issue of justice. And we remember that Dr. King said it was time 50 years ago at National Cathedral in March 1968, before he went on to his death in Memphis a month later. Love is the willingness to put the needs of others before your own. Peace is not just the absence of war, but the presence of a loving spirit among humans that encourages all kinds of art, music, shared enterprise, and shared laughter. Freedom is life in a just society with the ability to choose things that encourage love and peace. And finally, for all of you well-meaning, loving, working for peace and justice white folks who are here today. I brought some more show and tell. Do something meaningful for yourselves and your deeper understanding of these issues. Get this book, Tears We Cannot Stop, A Sermon to White America. It was noble and generous of the Jefferson County NAACP to ask black and white preachers to speak today. Michael Dyson is the voice of a black pastor and professor who has walked the talk. It will wake you up. By the way, the sermon I quoted, the last Sunday sermon that Dr. King ever gave at National Cathedral was called Staying awake through a great revolution. Peace be with you, and stay woke. <laughs>